Claire Foy and Matt Smith at the London premiere of The Crown Season 2 credit, Reuters Matt Smith, stepping aside for his co-star says he'll let the Queen sit down first. For a moment, it's possible to imagine it really is the Queen edging her way into the cramped conference room of a bland London hotel, so completely does Claire Foy embody the role on screen. In person, the lead couple of Netflix glossy royal drama The Crown play up to their royal personas. Much like her version of Elizabeth, Foy is charming but tactful, sidestepping any possible controversy. Does she like corgis? No comment. Former Doctor Who star Smith, meanwhile, is every bit as likely to interrupt with an amusing or mildly inappropriate Bon Mo as his Prince Philip. This meeting is a farewell, of sorts, Foy and Smith have hung up their regal robes for good, and will only return to these characters for the odd bit of clowning around in interviews. For its third series, The Crown will take on an entirely new cast led by Olivia Colman as the Queen. She has large shoes to fill. Foy and Smith have earned rapturous reviews for their portrayal of the royal couple, which reaches a new intimacy in the second series, released this Friday. Covering eight years from 1956 to 64, it explores the ups and downs of their marriage with a frankness that may come as a shock to some viewers. One character describes Prince Philip's 1967 tour of the Commonwealth as a five-month stag do, and it is strongly implied he was unfaithful in New Guinea. Philip is shown being led alone at night into the hut of a beautiful local woman. Smith, however, is quick to point out that the scene is open to interpretation. The Crown's writer, Peter Morgan, has said everyone in Britain knows that Prince Philip had an affair, but do you think viewers might be taken aback when we see him philandering in episode 2 MS, laughing, go for the jugular? I don't believe that we did see him philander, although there were subtle illusions. Look, I think with any story that's based in historical fact, it's your duty as a dramatist to shine a light on the things that are perhaps uncomfortable for a nation and anons, and I think Peter Morgan does that with a grace and skill. And it's our duty to tell the truth about the situation. We're not saying it's one thing or another, but we're allowing you to decide. Foy as the Queen, with Smith as Prince Philip credit, Netflix has your idea of the real Queen and Prince Philip changed since filming the show MS. Yes, it has, because I feel like I understand Prince Philip more emotionally. I'm very fond of him, actually. I do defend him to the hilt. See if I think it's very difficult to differentiate pre and post crown now, because my understanding of the queen now is not as a monarch, it's as a human being. But I do know the facts of her life more than I ever did before. And so it's given me the opportunity to really think about what this woman had felt in her life. I hope that's what the show does. You mustn't take these people for granted. Would you want to meet the queen CFM? I don't know. MSID love to see you meet her. It would be extraordinary. Would it be a good conversation CF? I don't know that it would be. I've played people before, and MS, and disappointed them before. CF, and felt the wrath. Laughs, no, I've had very honest. Conversations, where it felt like they were consenting to me playing the part. That HASNT happened with Elizabeth. If she could turn around to me and say, I really don't like what you've done, she'd be completely entitled to. For as Queen Elizabeth II credit, Netflix they've just celebrated their 70th anniversary together. Is it weird to play them as a young couple CF? I don't think it's weird. I find it really amazing and beautiful and serendipitous and coincidental. MS we shine a light on things which they endured that were very difficult, as any marriage will endure if it lasts that long, but look at them, they look terribly happy at the moment. Did you speak to people close to them, to get to know them better MS? Not really. We spoke to a couple of people who worked in the palace. CF only employees. Because people who are close to them will never talk to anybody. And also they aren't close to people. They're a family, and they don't have a lot of time to invite people in. I think they are each other's sounding board. So, without getting one or the other of them in a room. MS which would be just hilarious. CF, without doing that we had as much information as humanly possible. Claire, how long did it take you to perfect that voice CF? It took a while. It's funny, you can do as much work as you want, but ultimately it's the two weeks before you start shooting that are the most important. In the first week, we shot a large portion of episode 10. MSIT was our first day, in Scotland, on a moor. CF and we were doing things at the time that felt very foreign and very weird in our mouths. We were all doing a lot. But we had William Conacher, who is the best dialect coach in the whole world, so we were very well taken care of. Claire, you've just finished playing in Elizabeth, and now you're about to play Elizabeth in the next girl with a dragon tattoo film. How will your take on Elizabeth Salander differ from Numi Rapace and Rooney Mara C.F. Dunno? I'm a different person I think you can only ever be yourself in a role and bring yourself to it. 
that's it. I'm not planning on taking some wild bonkers tick on it or putting anything on the part that's not already there. I'm not going to do something for the sake of it just because I think that's what people expect. I've got to work from the inside out. Matt, do Philip and the doctor have anything in common? MS, yeah, they're both aliens. That's a genuine answer. They're both aliens in their own environment. They're both outsiders. They're both going against the grain. They're both rebels. They do what they want, when they want, how they want, they don't ask permission, cf like you ms I am a roguish alien. Matt Smith as the Doctor in Doctor Who, with Karen Gillan as Amy Pond credit, BBC, PA why does the British monarchy make for such good drama, cf you can't discount the fact that 97% of TV drama is not about royalty, but they are a reflection of us, and society at the time. They're a really distilled version of us all, in their own way. Are you looking forward to seeing Olivia Coleman take over the role CF? I can't wait. I want to be there on her first day, as a fan. But I don't think that would be helpful. MS but that's literally what happens when you're doing Doctor Who. Hello darling, mime's handing over the baton, there you go. You must have been treated a little like royalty, over the last couple of years. MS well, not enough. Gesturing to the refreshments table, with mock disdain, look, dry biscuits and sparkling water. CF real royalty, they work really hard. The idea that it's some fantasy, and that these people are untouched by what's actually happening in their lives, it doesn't sit well with me, that louding of them. MS it's not a fairy tale. CF the things I found most extraordinary about doing this show were the moments where we were getting out of an aeroplane, or getting into a car, standing outside of a door ready to go into a room. Inhales sharply, adopts a rigid smile, hello. We're here for you. We're giving ourselves to you. M sits weird. You realize all the protocol they go through to get that. Shake this hand first, wear this hat in this carnation. It's a much tougher life than it looks. CF and you've never had one instance of someone saying they've met the queen and she was a bit rude, ever. She has met a billion people, and she has never once just gone, I'm a bit tired, I can't be bothered. The second season of The Crown is available on Netflix from December 8th.